Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I take you to Houston, Texas for another agency shoot, where I transform this space into an interview setup utilizing my small mirrorless cameras and an Aperture 600X. Stick around for the end to see the results and let's get into it. So I'm in Houston pushing in for my shoot today. It is a dental shoot. We will be doing photography for the first half of the day until about lunchtime, so like nine to noon. And then there's a small little break, 30 minute lunch break, which usually I'm not able to take because I like to have a little bit more time to set up. We set up for testimonials and B-roll. And so I set up an interview setup. It goes testimonial for 30 minutes, B-roll for 30 minutes, testimonial for 30 minutes, B-roll for 30 minutes. We just kind of zigzag with that. Sometimes we'll do testimonial, B-roll, then new person comes in, we'll do B-roll, then testimonial. It just all depends on the flow. And we do four sets. So four people come in, we do testimonials and B-roll for each of those folks. And then the day is wrapped up. We squeeze in headshots during the photos and we do kind of staged what I like to call almost like stock photography style stuff. Always bring us doorstop so you can get in. <clears throat> there aren't always people there to hold the door for you. So that helps. Multiple are good. <clears throat> Knowing how to control your cart and move your cart around is really important. Squeezing into elevators not to cause damage. You could tell that I didn't hit anything or scratch anything. If you cause damage on location, you've got to pay for it. So let's avoid that. So I'm going to do the same thing in reverse. We are at our location. It is tiny. So we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna leave my cart parked out here and we'll see what we can figure out. So this is the space where we need to do our testimonial interviews. This corner looks really cool, but the problem is, is we have these windows that go out to a hallway that we have no control over and reflections can be an issue. And then the other direction is just kind of a bland corner. Maybe I could move these flowers over there and doll it up a bit. So that's what we're working with. It is very tiny in here. Um, I'm against the wall here and I have one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So it is a very small space to work with. So we're gonna put up a camera and see what angle we can get to start off with. And the reason I'm liking going with this direction is I'm liking the reflections in the glass. It looks good, but we can't put a light this way because it will show in the reflection. So we've gotta turn it a little. Even though it looks really nice the way it is. Maybe we can cheat it by going a little high and are going down. So if we go high, we could eliminate it. So right now in the reflection, be right here. If I could get the light this high, I could probably avoid it showing in the reflection. So let's let's aim for that. 
So this is gonna be a tighter frame. So I'm gonna make some space in here by moving a couple things around. One at a time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. so one person at a time. Um, we don't have any double people like last time, do we? Nope. Okay, I don't yeah. like doing that. And the reason I'll tell you is it's always so awkward because one person is just sitting there all weird. You know what I mean? Like one person's talking, the other one's sitting there picking their nose. I mean, what do they do? So it's, you know what I mean? Two people sitting and there's always someone dominating the conversation and it just looks very weird. So I try to avoid that when I can, um, just for my own yep. liking. Singles. <laughs> Singles always best. Unless it's someone interviewing, like, you know, you have a 2020 Barbara Walters and they, you know, they're going back and forth, but it's not just one person sitting there awkward. So that will be cleared out here. Yeah, so I'm really liking this. I could do, I'll uh, take care of the cables and stuff like that. But the thing is, is I'm really liking those reflections there of this lamp and other stuff. So we, uh, it's looking really good. And then it's just, we're getting those lights in the background there. And it oh, looks really maybe? pleasing to the eye. Cool. So we're going like to keep going with that going. look. So this is where we landed at. We have the 600X right here and it's kind of towards center. And then we have our wide and our tight over here, which is a 50 and an 85. And then you see our bounce over in this area. It's kind of where we landed. I'm putting up the grid on the hair light to see what we have going on. It's a really big battle with reflections, framing in this tight space. and. I wish I could go lower with the lights, a little high. Let's dive into the gear used for this setup. I have two Sony A7IVs. I do only have one Shinobi five inch monitor, which I switch between the two cameras to check my false color and have a bigger screen to look at. I'm using the Aperture 600X with the Light Dome 3 and the two and a half stop diffusion to make it extra soft. On my wide camera, I'm using the G Master 50 millimeter f1.2. And on the tight shot, it's the Sony 85 mil f1.8 G series lens. I'm utilizing the Zoom F3 for audio from the shotgun microphone. It has 32 bit float, which gives me a little bit more flexibility. And then the microphone is the Sennheiser 416. I do have a bounce on the side. And for the hair light, I'm utilizing the Amaran T2C with grid. This is what it looks like for the person getting interviewed. Now the light is pretty high compared to normal, but that was to avoid reflections. And if they have glasses, it should be helpful as well. And here are the results. I have a love hate with the reflections because the reflections made it really difficult in this space, but also the reflections added some depth to the space as well. So. I ended up liking the reflections in the long run and used them to my advantage. I did have to go higher with the light, but that's just one of those things that you have to compromise on. I think overall the images look really nice and they have a soft look to them. I got the source as close as I could and still kept it out of frame. Let's take a look at the shots with the false color light applied. Now you may be thinking, wow, that's a little hot right there, 90% on the skin tones. Well, just so you know, I did not edit this footage. This was sent over to the client. It could have used some adjustment, but it was sent over and this was what was released. So I actually pulled this footage straight from YouTube. So I would have adjusted a little bit to not have it so hot on the skin tones and kind of took it down on the levels. So here's something a little different. When I was on the YouTube channel, pulling the footage to share from the shots that I captured, I actually came across interviews that were done a year earlier in the same space for the same practice. And you can see what the previous videographer did in regards to their setup. And it's kind of cool that we actually both decided to shoot in the same direction and we still have totally different looks. So it's cool to compare someone else's work to your own and see how you think of things and frame things up and just set up in general. So I thought that would be something nice to share with you guys. How often are you crammed into a tiny space with a lot of challenges for your shoots and your interviews? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for everyone that watches, comments, and subscribes to the channel. I'll see you guys on the next one.